Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Southern Castaneda Spiritualist Camp Meeting Association. Um, this is our Lyceum. This is our Lyceum this morning uh, that we are doing this morning. So if you are tuning in today for our Lyceum, we are going to be teaching about spiritualism and a connection to spiritualism today. My name is the Reverend Dr. Lewis Gates. Uh, and today I want to talk about uh, connecting to spiritualism. Connecting to spiritualism, connecting to the higher vibration of spirit. And I just want to talk about how this all started to propel itself in motion. Give me just a moment. Give me just a moment, guys. Trying to run all the equipment by myself. So <laughs> some of the equipment was messing up over there. So I want to talk about spiritualism and how this kind of started and kind of give you kind of a aspect of what spiritualism is. Everybody that has a connection to spiritualism or connection to a spiritualist church has a really good understanding of where it started with the Fox sisters in Heightsville, New York. So we all have a really good understanding of that. And we have, an, as far as the camp, the camp, the Spiritualist Camp Meeting Association, a lot of people know that George Colby came here. He came here and propelled himself in a situation in his life and started to connect to spirit here because he connected to spirit on a trance meeting association, trance. And what happened was a guide, his guide, Seneca, spoke to him and told him that he would create a, a spiritualist camp in the southeastern part of the United States. And if you kind of look about the time this camp was actually brought into motion, you got to kind of, kind of understand that he had to travel from where he was all the way down to Jacksonville, Jacksonville, and come to Jacksonville and go ahead and get on a steamboat, a boat, came down the St. John's River. And if you know anything about Central Florida, he had the dock over at Blue Springs Landing, which was, it's quite a ways, but it's at least a good 20 minute, 30 minute drive from where we are to get all the way out there. And that's what the roads we have today. And George Colby didn't really know where he was going. He had his guide Seneca. He also had the philosopher, which is another guide that he actually had working around him. And he had the guide, a guide that was known as the unknown were working with him as they brought him through the wilderness, through the wilderness to this part, to this part of Florida, to set up this spiritualist camp. He didn't even know really at the beginning of this whole situation that he was actually going to, it was coming to, come to fruition because he almost lost the camp. He had to get on, he, he had to get on horseback and travel all the way to the seat and actually put claim to the property before somebody else did, because somebody else won claim to this property. And he just made it in time to get the property here in Castega. And then a little while later, there was this whole meeting, this whole meeting of, of spiritualists was going to be happening in Ponce de Leon Springs. Now Ponce de Leon is quite a ways up, uh, a little ways up. And the spiritualists wanted to try to put a camp right there in Ponce de Leon Springs. And they were building all kinds of stuff, trying to attract the spiritualist there. And George Colby went to the meeting and offered this piece of property, this piece of property. And then uh, Emma Hoff, some of the women, they came out here and they looked at the property and thought it looked like Casadega Lake, New York. So that's kind of where he got his name, Casadega, uh, rocks beneath the water. It's what is the Seneca meaning of Castadega is, rocks beneath the water. And I was always taught here in spiritualism, taught in the vibration of spiritualism, was rocks beneath the water. If we kind of take that whole aspect of rocks beneath the water, water runs over the rocks. Even though the rocks are rough and the edges are not kind of sharp, as the water runs over the rocks, it smooths out all the edges of the rocks 
smooths them out and allows them to sit in that pond as the water runs over the rocks. It soothes off the rough edges the situations within the vibration. So if you really kind of really understand what spiritualism is, it is a continuity of life. It is a communication with the people that have passed the spirit. We believe that communication was a fact that we can, we, we can talk to them. And it was mediums who actually were working with talking to spirit. But back in the day, back in the 1800s, late 1800s, there was a lot of trance mediumship, uh, channeling, working with spirit, uh, trumpets, seances, all kinds of things going on at that time to communicate with spirit. And a lot of the major ordeal with spiritualism was right after the Civil War. When a lot of people died, a lot of people went to spirit and people didn't get a chance to say goodbye. So spiritualism took a big hold at that point of this communication, this communication with spirit, with people in the spirit world. Then it kind of waned for a little while, then it kind of waned for a little while, then came World War I. Spiritualism kind of, kind of took off again. Uh, communication with the so-called dead, the people in spirit. So people would come to mediums, come to people that could communicate with spirit, and allow them to communicate and say, because a lot of the people that are in wars, people that have passed the spirit of wars, never get a chance to say goodbye. The people are not at their bedside, they're, they, they are not there when they pass, and they want that, that communication, that kind of last, to kind of talk to them, to speak to them in the spirit world. And through spirit communication, the scientifically proof of that is that, that we prove the existence of spirit communication. We prove the existence of life after death as spiritualists. By speaking to spirit, by bringing through information from the spirit world, we have that communication with the spirit world. And I'm, I'm one of the mediums that really believe that everyone, everyone can communicate with spirit. It is that continuity of working with spirit, continuity of connecting to spirit each and every day. If we do that every day and work with them and work with, with, with their guides, work with the people in spirit, work with the individuals around us, we're allowing ourselves to have that communication, that guidance of, of what spirit wants for us, how they love us, how much they want to propel us forward to help us on our journey. And a lot of the information is mostly to give you information of how people love you, they have this connection to you, and to prove the existence of, of spirit. That's what mediumship is for. Uh, it's to prove the existence that spirit does exist on the other side. When we kind of, a lot of the end of the day, uh, spiritualism was this vocal box or this, this soapbox for women. It was for women to say what they want to do during the women's suffrage movement, all the right to vote, all this stuff. Women were not allowed to speak in different platforms and different vibrations at that time. So this was the place where they spoke to, to, to groups of people. Women were allowed to speak at spiritualist gatherings, at spiritualist camps meeting associations. They were allowed to speak and give their idea of what they thought the rights were of individuals. And spiritualism has been a big connection to focusing rights of individuals uh, during, the, during slavery, during the, the women's movement. So we're saying spiritualism has always been this, this communication, allowing people to speak from the platforms here to be able to tell you about their experiences. And that's the one really good thing about Casadega. Because when you come here, you get information from individuals that have gone through about the same thing you're going through. Whether you're just starting your communication with spirit, maybe you're just starting your communication with spirit. Maybe you're just starting that, that first communication. What happens is when you do that, when you connect to that vibration, you have to really realize that everything about connecting to spirit is through work. 
doesn't just happen overnight. You get little bits and pieces, but it's through working with spirit, connecting to the spirit world, gives you that connection of understanding, that connection of, of finding that peace, that quiet within you, allowing you to communicate and allowing yourself to get yourself out of the way. But spiritualism always has been a part of most religions. Most religions speak to spirit. They do it in different ways, but if you listen to different religions, different vibrations and different religions, you notice that they are talking to God, talking to the Christ, talking to some, they're talking and they're getting information. They feel it right down in here. They feel this information coming down from spirit. That is our communication. That is our communication because we feel the vibration coming down through spirit. Some of us are clairvoyant, which we are actually going to see spirit. We're going to, we're going to see them. Uh, we're going to see spirit and our vibration and our connection to spirit. We're also going to, I want you to know that clairsentient feeling or sensing the spirit around you. A lot of individuals who just feel, they'll feel spirit touching them. They'll feel this presence around them or this presence overshadowing them. So you want to try to figure out what of the clairs or what of those vibrations work for you, whether it be clairsentient, clairvoyance, clair, clair audience, or any of the gifts from any of the gifts, what gifts actually work for you. And that's what makes Casadega that kind of connection. Because most of us come here, we think we're only going to stay for a little while, then we're off. <laughs> we're here. Uh, but because of the people that come here looking for knowledge, not because they're they're looking for us to tell them exactly how to do it. They're looking for pieces of knowledge, pieces of connection that works for them. I did a lecture many years ago about a toolbox. All of us have toolboxes within our vibration. Your toolbox might be large, small, it could be any color it wants. It could be a blue toolbox, red, green, doesn't matter what color or what size your toolbox is. But a toolbox is actually in your vibration. And it's what you pick up, what you pick up on your journey, you place in that toolbox. You place there, you place in that vibration to, to connect to others, to, to connect to your higher self, to connect to your loved ones, your guides, your protectors, the people around you. I have a strong impression about my life that I know that guides follow me. They overshadow me. They walk with me. Sometimes I don't listen to them. Sometimes I just kind of block them out because I don't want to. But overall, once in a while, when I really do have to really do something, they will drag me to it. <laughs> Whether I want to or not, I'm still going in that direction. I might think I made the decisions. <laughs> uh, it's not always that we make the decisions in our lives. The spirit kind of ushers us in the right direction so that we can feel that we've made the right decision. But they move us in the direction that we need to be. Because everything in your life has the connection to where you're supposed to be in your life. We as individuals think that we're kind of in a place in our lives because we're there because we need to be there. I still feel like we're there because we need to affect other people. We're here living in Casadega. We're here teaching, instructing, trying to help, trying to encourage. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do in our lives is probably for us. But I think a lot of our teachers here, the instructors, the readers here, we've been placed here to help others, to encourage them on their journey, to put something in their toolbox, to allow them to move forward in their own spiritual growth, their own spiritual connection of where they need to be. And when George Colby came here, it wasn't because he came here because he was ill and he got cured here uh, from drinking the water and being here on this property. But he came here because he was directed. Not exactly to the right property. He just knew that he had to come in this direction. And he ended up here. Now, was it George Colby's really his connection that he needed, that he found this? Or was it his guides ushering him and pushing him gently down the path from Blue Springs Landing all the way to here? all the way to this place. It was spirit who woke him up and said he had to go put deed, 
put paperwork in on this property before it was taken away. And he got up and rode to the place so he could have connection to this place. The Underhills were, were a major player within this camp and with George Colby, the Underhills, because they have property right down next to his. Uh, if you come here to Castega and go down near the park, you'll notice that you'll see signs taking you through kind of a history of the organization, past George Colby's property into the Webster property and the Underhill property. It's all back here on in the back part of the camp, but the history was the individuals that followed George Colby. Don't think that George Colby wandered up this path all by himself and ended up here. There were a group of people that were following him that had come with him to find this place. We only know about George Colby, Seneca, but there were other people that followed him on that journey, that followed him to this direction. And it was Spirit who directed him to go to the meeting and and possibly on Springs when they were planning on putting the spiritual camp there. He was the one that offered this place, this piece of property to the spiritualists to build the camp here. So when we kind of think that we as spiritualists need to find our journey or find our connection in our lives, what are you finding in your life? What do you connect to? Spiritualism is a science, a philosophy, and a religion. But the science kind of plays out the vibration. I remember Reverend Nick Sarant well, used to say, we need to do science. Science has to happen. And science does really have to happen in this religion for us to prove the existence of the existence of people in the spirit world. To prove that spirit does exist. That's really what the religion was really meant for. It was never really meant to to give readings, to have mediums. It was meant to have gatherings of spiritualists so that they could communicate with the spirit world to teach everyone how to do it. It wasn't just for one person. It was for a group, an individual group of people wondering how to do it. When I traveled with my mother when I was a kid, when I was a child, I used to travel through a lot of these spiritualist camps, Camp Chesterfield, Lilydale, Camp Edna. I remember playing out in Camp Edna out in, front of, out in front of the church when I was probably five, six years old with the other kids. So I've been through most of the camps with my mother and when she practiced and she worked the spiritualist organizations. But I noticed the spiritualists would attract people that were, that were in wonderment of, of how spirit worked wonderment. And that's what I feel like people to be part of this whole religion. I've been in this religion all my life, but I still have that wonderment about what spirit's going to do next. What is spirit going to produce in front of me today? What's spirit going to do? And maybe that's because we need to go into understanding where we need to be as spiritless. Ruiz says to be impeccable with your word. Now, a lot of people will think that's what I'm saying. Be impeccable with what I'm telling you. Well, that's a little small part of it. Impeccable with your word is what you're telling yourself. How you're communicating with your higher being is how you're communicating with yourself. If I tell you, if I keep telling myself how bad it is, how bad it is, how bad it is, it's going to be bad. But if I keep kind of having some kind of vision in my life of understanding what's going on in the future, that it's going to be positive. I'll start planning positive energy into the future. I might have weeds right now, but there are flowers coming up here shortly. When I was first here dealing with a lot of the people here, when I started really getting into the program here, I remember Reverend Donna Bohr, and she told me, one time and uh, there were things going on. And my, she told me one time, she said, Lewis, you need to have a gratitude journal. And I said, why? And she looked at me, she said, every day you sit down and you write down at least five things, five things that you're grateful for every day. 
even though things are going in a crazy manner. What are you grateful for every single day? So you're planting those plants out on the out on the field. Spiritualism works that way because we allow ourselves to click into that higher vibration within ourselves. We allow ourselves to communicate with spirit and yeah, most of the time spirit's there to help us. <laughs> Uh, sometimes they have a little sense of humor, so we have to kind of discern the spirit sometimes. But most of the time, they're there for our highest and best, trying to move us down the path. But if we allow ourselves to listen, to plant those flowers out on the path ahead of us, not really, don't worry about the weeds that are growing up around you right now. Yeah, use it, use Usually those will thin out and the flowers and the beautiful situations will appear in your life if you keep the focus on positive energy, positive situations within your life. And if you allow yourself to understand that, and spiritualism, we're not looking, when you're coming for a reading with me or somebody else in this organization, you're not looking for negative. Some people tell me, oh, Lewis, if it's bad, just tell me, just tell me, just hit me with it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tell somebody something that's going to disrupt their life a little bit, you're going to explain to them how to fix it. Because really, if you come to a medium or you come to somebody and you have some kind of problem, problem in your life, you already know you have a problem. You're not looking for me to tell you how bad the problem is. You're looking for me to try to help you to understand how to get through it and how to move to a different vibration within your life. That's what you're looking for me to do. Not for me to be totally negative with the reading and I what good am I going to be going to be to you if I don't tell you how to move your life to a higher vibration. As spiritualists, we want to increase, increase your life to a higher vibration. Because I have a strong belief if I increase your life, if I bless your life with balance or connect you to a higher vibration, you're going to affect spirit world in a beautiful way, which in turn affects me in an awesome way. And then in turn affects you. So it in turn, it affects me. What I do along the path, what I do as I move forward in this life. And we all picked our journey. So the question here is, some of us think that our cars kind of just took us here. Some of us know that our car just brought us here. <laughs> uh, we don't know how we got here, but it just got us here. And we just didn't leave. As a child, I believed that I believed that I was never coming back to Castega. I wasn't going to be part of Castega. I was going to be somewhere else. But over my life, it just kind of kept it moved me. It kept moving me. I finally, spirit is a way of kind of saying, well, we're going to do what we feel is best for you. You just think whatever you want. And they just move you. And they move you back into a situation. And when I was here back in the day, we had mediums that were extremely, extremely awesome. Um, I remember sitting in a, on a bench talking to, to, to the spirit, to the people that were working here. We're in the back of the church here. One day we had Eloise Page, Reed Lilla, Kenneth Custance, Gladys Custance. We had, we had Lolly Weigel. <laughs> uh, we had people on the black part and I was sitting right in the middle of them with all these people sitting on this back bench and the energy, the energy, the Helen Hansen, the energy that was in this vibration was awesome because everybody wanted to be part of it. They wanted to do their part. And maybe I'm teaching you today and helping you to try to understand. We're not asking you to, to, oh my God, you got to move here. You got to bring here. You got to come here but asking you to come and support. That's, you can support the camp, but then support your well-being. Because if the camp helps you, encourages you, then it is going to help the camp. So I believe that the camp is geared here. Seneca, the unknown, the philosopher, oh, they're still here. They didn't go anywhere. Even George Colby passed the spirit, but his guides are still here. Guides who founded this, this circle of spirit who founded this organization is still here. They're not here because 
They're not here because they need to just go somewhere else. They're here. And they're still within this organization looking after it. They're still looking after it. If even George Colby was the catalyst to get him here to affect this organization, to put it in motion, to get it to where it needed to be. But the spirits here are here to protect it, to keep it where it needs to be. So no matter what happens through life and through all the stuff, the camp will still be here. It is circled by a circle of spirit to guide the camp and they encourage the organization on its journey. So if we allow ourselves just to be open for change, open for a connection to a higher sense of consciousness, we're told here that everything that we should teach from this platform should be spiritualist. That's what we're told. Uh, spiritualism co covers a lot of territory. It does. It covers a lot of territory than the vibration talking about spirit and understanding how spirit works. Most of the spirit connections from the late 1800s, early 1900s, yeah, probably not as feasible as it should be right now. We're all not going to dress in white and eat a small lunch and sit around a large table and bang out numbers or alphabet letters for the whole day and then go back home. Uh, we don't have the time, the energy, the vibration now. People don't have that to just sit quietly with groups of people and just sit and manifest things within the vibration. So it comes down to mental mediumship. It comes down to a form of mediumship. Now I can tell you just to do mediumship and just that's it. Medium, met, mental mediumship and don't do anything else. Hmm. I have a long, strong standing of whatever mediumship works for you, whatever it works for you, whatever connects to your vibration that gets you out of your way, allows you to connect to higher source. I believe that you could be your best medium, your best counselor, best person in your life, if you do what's best for you. Not what's best for me, some other teacher, but what's best for you. You come out here to Casadega, take as many classes as you want. Take from every one of those classes what you think you need, what you need to put in your toolbox. Once you place everything in your toolbox, then you can understand how all that stuff is going to work with you. Then you make yourself your own, that own connection to the spirit world that own connection to the spirit world. I can run wires. I used to run wires through homes. I can run wires from the main power box out into the house, but if I don't attach something to it, it's not going to work. You're not going to see it working unless I attach something to it. The question here is we have to attach something to our spiritual growth, our connection. Not, only, not any of us, not too many people in this religion were born into this religion. We came in this religion but through aspects in our lives. Through other parts of religions, different things, different things have happened in our lives. And we still have that within our being as we travel down the path. There's only a few of us. I was here with, with, with Virginia Hutchinson. Reverend Virginia Hutchinson, she was here and she was born into this religion. I was born into this religion. Um, I ran away from it, but for a while, but I was born into it. So was Virginia. So was a lot of people that I came to know through my life. But it doesn't mean that you can't progress within this religion. You're still going to bring something from you. Whether it's your Methodist upbringing, your Catholic upbringing, your Christianity doesn't matter what you bring, you're still going to put that in your toolbox. I can't rifle through your toolbox to squeeze everything out of your life and say, nope, can't do that, can't do that. But you got to be a spiritualist, can't do this. You're going to bring that with you. But it's going to make you the person you need to be within this religion. It's going to make you the spiritualist you need to be. Because we all don't want to be all connected in the same vibration, the same connection. If every one of us did exactly the same thing, that'd be a little bit boring. We're different. We're different. How we communicate with spirit, how we work with spirit, how we heal, how we view our spirituality, our spirituality in our lives. I have a different belief than some people. Some people believe certain things. I believe different things, but that's how I was raised, how I was taught through my life. I used to sit right up here on the hill as a kid. My mother used to go work and she used to sit me up here with Wilbur Hull. 
And Wilbur Hall used to look after me. He used to teach me. He used to teach me stuff. I liked Wilbur. He was, uh, people would come from everywhere in the county. Because Wilbur was good with numbers. And he'd stand out next to his fence. And people would drive by, open the window, and he'd come. Bet number 64, 72. And they'd drive off. But they knew if they wanted, they had to bring him something. And people would always come back and bring him money. Because he gave them the right number, the right thing to do. He was really good at that. I've never been good at that. I can't tell you how to win the lottery. If I did, a few of us here would get together, we win the lottery. <laughs> so I'm not going to be able to do that. But I do different things I do in my mediumship. And there's different mediums here to do different vibrations, different situations when I do their mediumship. It's all mental mediumship, but it's still the whole vibration. I kind of looked here, but two of my grandmother used to tell me, mental mediumship is the like a bookstore full of tarot cards. You're going to pick a deck off the wall. You're going to open it up. You're going to like it. You're going to work with it. You're going to connect to it. And that's going to be part of your mental mediumship. It's going to connect you to that higher vibration. going to get you out of your way. So it's what you pick, what you decide works for you, what's in your toolbox, what connects to you. And a spiritualism, a spiritualist, it isn't a question I'm asking you to be a spiritualist. I'm asking you to understand how you work with spirit and what journey is spirit trying to force you towards. And if it's out here, you can fight. I think I know, and Richard Russell knows, and some of us know, we got dragged here. <laughs> we got dragged here kicking and screaming. <laughs> we got here. They wouldn't let us out, though. It's like Hotel California. We got in. We're not leaving. But the question here, when spirit really needs you here, they'll propel you here. But understand, spiritualism has this strong connection. Throughout, throughout its inception of being for rights, being for the voice, the voice box for women, for women to speak, to speak from the platform about women, about women's rights and the rights of the downtrodden. It was a spokesperson. It was a spokes platform for people to do that. It's still a platform to speak about a connection to the spirit world, that we do not die. We only survive this death. We leave this body and end up on the spirit world, traveling through the spirit world. It's only a door we pass through. We don't die. We just pass to a different door, a different vibration, a higher vibration, a vibration that if you work with your self, your higher vibration within yourself, you're able to connect to them. You're able to talk to them. You're able to connect to that vibration. So I hope that this lesson today didn't discourage you from being a spiritualist. I, I want you to believe that if you're going to be a spiritualist and going to be part of a spiritualist organization, follow your own path. Don't get stopped into some path that doesn't quite work for you. Follow your own journey, your own vibration. Set your own toolbox. Before you venture into something else. Don't try to do something that somebody else wants you to do because there's too many people that have been in this work throughout my life that are no longer in the work because someone said they had to walk a certain way. So if you're walking a certain way or connecting to a certain situation in your life, remember, does it work for you? Does it connect to you? Does it bring that vibration to you? Allow yourself to be as spiritualist that you want to be not what other people expect from you. And I want to thank you. We're going to turn, we're going to close this up. We're going to set up for our Sunday service. Uh, it'll be Deborah Jordan will be doing the announcing and Richard Russell will be doing the lecture today. Just a little note, if you're listening to this, remember next week on Mother's Day, we will be opening the church. Uh, so, so we will be opening. It will be Mother's Day. Jerry Moore will be being our lecturer. And the Wednesday after that will be Reverend Philip DeLong will be doing the message work here on Wednesday night. So we are starting to open our bookstore and connect, connect to the Castanega website at castanega.org. You can check out what's going on. They'll be posting the stuff up there at the website. And if you felt 
a need to donate to the organization here today, just go to the website at castega.org, hit the donate button, and we'll appreciate anything that you give us to keep the organization going and to keep it to where it needs to be. I want to thank you for listening to me.